Welcome to Watercolour Session with me and my dagger brush and 140 piece of watercolour paper. This is Bockingford, but anything else will do. The brush is a dagger brush. It's shaped strangely with a point and an angle. So the marks it makes are sometimes unexpected and it carries a lot of water or paint. So as you can see, it's made me think about background. That's a good lesson actually. First thing you need to learn about watercolour is accidents will happen and you have to make the best of them. At least if you're the kind of person I am, I'm not terribly tidy. Perhaps I could be tidy, but in fact, I think the best results are achieved in watercolour with a certain amount of understanding and not too much tidiness. Okay, so you can see that my palette is going to be simple today. A restricted palette is usually more effective and because we're painting clematis and they're very purple and blue and pinkish, the only other colors I need to think about are greens and maybe some sunshine coming through the shadows. Now I'm using permanent rose here, but there's a little purple left in my brush. And there's definitely some purple in this brushful. Whatever brush you're using, let the brush do the work. Allow the brush to make those petal shapes or leaf shapes and leave them alone. Don't fiddle. Yes, it's going to run. It's okay if it runs. In fact, I'm always surprised at how popular these paintings are when they're just a result of a lot of happy accidents, lots of running and a combination of hard and soft edges, not always where I intended them to be. So let the watercolor have a say when you're painting. This floating feeling I get in some of my flower paintings is achieved by allowing the paint to join the edge of the paper. And you can see it's doing that. Now I'm coming in with some sap green and I've made sure all my paints are well sprayed so they're going to be ready when I stick my brush in them. Ultramarine, one of my favorite.
sometimes, especially with this brush, but with lots of other brushes too, you end up putting too much paint in one spot. So as I did there, just wash your brush, give it a squeeze with paper towel and let it soak some of the paint up again. There's the chromium green. It's much stronger and slightly opaque. Where the paper's dried, or nearly dried, it allows those sharp edges. But I'm adding a little bit of cadmium yellow as well, just to let the sun shine in. There you go. Now don't get carried away with the leaves. It's tempting if you're looking at a picture of the flowers themselves or if you're lucky enough to be out there in the garden painting them. There's a lot of leafage and it takes away, if you get too much, from the beautiful purple flowers. I've got to the point now where I'll study the flower. Perhaps I'll try painting it directly from a photograph to get to know it. But those paintings are usually stiff and they just don't say very much, except, you know, here's a clematis, big deal. What I'm trying to do is to express how I feel about a clematis in this painting. So, although it may lack a certain amount of accuracy, it has a feel to it. And some of these strokes are just about feeling. I like the diagonal direction, but it was purely accidental. It just seemed to be the right thing at the time. I think it's worked. Now I'm drying this with a hairdryer. You don't need to use a hairdryer. You can go and have a cup of tea and wait for it to dry a bit, but it does need some time to soak in. I came back and put some centers in a couple of these flowers, as you can see. And there are yellow stamens, so I'm going to use some lemon yellow for those. It's a little bit opaque and will probably show up against the dark purple. Now, I'm adding some tendrils. There are lots of these with clematis, a climbing plant. But you don't want to get carried away here either, as long as you have a few going in at least two of the main directions. I usually say three, three sides, just to be safe. Now I'm using the lemon to put in a few 
tendrils which might be catching the light. And perhaps a few more stamens would be a good idea. I think that's it, don't you? I hope you'll try this. It was lots of fun. Perhaps go and have a cup of tea and come back. And if you need to put in a little more shadow, which I did here, do so. Use lots of water and stick with your colors. Just mix the yellow with the green and you get a warm gray. I hope you'll try it.